Yeah, 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 yeah. Making her way to the mic. They start dimming the lights. You start feeling alright. From Birmingham, home of the Teddy Longs and the Ruben Stutters. More once you discover. For all of the lovers, Whitney Houston and Roman Reigns. For all of the lovers, and Mickey James and Marvin Gaye. For all of the lovers, and Sasha Banks, Janelle Monet, Silk, Sonic, and Paige. Allow me to say. Love. I just found a place we escape every one of us. I was kind of late, so I just made it up the struggle bus. Walking by the fate, cause I know it's right in front of us. Yo, I ain't with the hate, gotta focus on what's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Steph Hardy is on the air. Had to drop a couple bars just to make you all aware. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. You know I go by Joe or the rest of the show. Welcome to a new episode of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl Stephanie Hardy, host and creator of this fabulous platform, contributing writer for Daily DDT and color commentator, featured in various promotions. But I am not alone. I am here with a super, super special guest. He's like family at this point. Um, he is, of course, one third of the Jobber Tears podcast with Janelle from HR and Sir. Wilkins and he is also a referee and he is here to talk about a special event but before we get to that this is Mr. Black how are you Mr. Black what's up y'all I'm doing good Miss Miss Stephanie Hardy (laughs) I'm so happy to have you on again because like I just remember the first time I had you on it was just audio and now look at us we're in video and I've had all three of you on again and then now look at us again we're just on video and it's cool so yeah, yeah this is yes, great. yes wow i forgot the audio dang <laughs> okay, yeah right. yeah we've evolved honey <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes so just to get started with everything i gotta ask you when did you fall in love in, with wrestling and what keeps you in love with it Dang it. I mean, I said because my dad had like the um you remember back in the day, all black men loved to record wrestling back in the day. They should record it. So he had a tape. I, I think it was WrestleMania. I don't know what how it happened. I saw Hogan and then I was intrigued because it was fighting. Because I'm a boy. I was a little boy. Like we love fighting, rough house. I was like, okay. And I saw I was like, okay, this is cool. So then my dad ended up passing, and then I didn't see him for years. Then one day I saw like Sting. So me and my brother was calling him Scorpion because he really had a scorpion on his legs. He's like, Scorpion, Scorpion. And then I haven't stopped watching it. We found out what Channel Raw was, and then I've been a fan ever since. And I say what's keeping me going is like, honestly, people like you. That who just see it as entertainment, nothing more. You understand? Yeah, I do get emotionally involved, but you understand that, yo, they're just doing a job and it's not that serious. You feel me? So mm-hmm. that's how I see it. That's how I see it. Like people like y'all yeah, and me roughing, me being independent, me doing podcasts, just the whole everything around it is keeping going. And the fact that it's a storyline. How many combat sport that you can have a triple threat? You can fight in the hell in a cell. You can have a tag team match. You can have a ladder match for custody for a kid. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. And boxing. Um, you can have a, oh, man, you know what, son? Imagine if Muhammad Ali could take on three opponents at once. I take all y'all suckers down. And he beats them? Forever bragging rights. George Foreman. Um, um what's, what's the other one that he fought? Like, imagine all his, the three top competitors. And he says, imagine the promo he cuts. The promo, you know, he, he talks some shit. Then mm-hmm. he beats all of them. Only in wrestling, you could actually say that. I'd be all for y'all men. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come yeah, on. That's the only sport you can get away with it at. Because if you do it in any other sport, it's crazy. It's all over the news. It's all over ESPN. It's a problem. 
Exactly. Exactly. It's a problem. But in wrestling, exactly. when it happens, it is straight and everything is fine. So I'm glad, you know, that those are the things that keep you interested. And then, of course, the community that, you know, you've built, you know, from doing what it is that you do and just meeting people that keeps you in it and everything. Like, it's just a beautiful thing when you really think about it and you sit about all the when, and think about all the connections that you've made in wrestling and because you are you know a host of an of an amazing successful trailblazing podcast like the Jabba Tears podcast thank you, thank and you. your network um the Jabba Tears network and the special ed kids how do you feel you've grown as a host and as a person since you've started um the network with Janelle and Wilkins <laughs> there's some real journalism Questions, dang. Let me sit. My, uh, <laughs> let me sit on my Stanley real quick. I feel like um, help me find my voice. You feel me? Helps me find my voice. Help me. It helps me to find a sense of um to be grounded. I think the thing is, it's like when you just a black man, a black man in America, you're very talented, and you don't have your father around. You have nobody to kind of guide you to do whatever. You feel me how the guy is in the right path. So like me having wrestling, it made me consistent. It made me work on, on a lot of my natural gift of um, the gift of gab. It made me work on that. Made me a better made me a better servant to others. Because how important it is it's like whenever you provide an event, you have to be to service to the people. Because the, the people are the currency. And it helped me ironically it helped me get close to closer with God. Like it sounds crazy though, but having that close to God because I had to understand that how to, I can't do this alone. I can't do this by myself. I need to be in the team, regardless how regardless how life is. People always say that oh, I, I'm alone. I do stuff by myself, but people don't understand that. No, we are collectively. We need each other. Like we doing this right now. Somebody had to come up with the idea of Streamyard. We doing this right now. The people who do have the server have to keep it on. Me over here in New York, we have Con Ed. I don't know what a podcast you have. Somebody had to go to work to do their job so us for us to talk. So it really taught me have faith, believe in God, and you're never bigger than the team because you always will need a team. So yeah. Yeah, that's really deep. I like that a lot. Like I feel like something that happens to us a lot when we work on stuff like this is that we do tend to isolate ourselves um, because of what we're working on because we focus so hard but you do have to realize that you aren't alone you know when it comes to it and I'm really happy that that allowed you that this has allowed you to grow and um, realize that you you know that other people do depend on you and you know it allows you to be more dependent and of course you know the faith part that's really you know know good too because there have been times where my faith has kept me from going off the edge when it comes to you know getting into stuff you know in this wrestling thing so it's important to have that balance that healthy thing that keeps you in it so I definitely get it um in the chat you have Vaughn saying deep message and oh, black you, media tour um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, media tour black yes you've been getting around um I've been seeing your other stuff so in the midst of you, you know, being a host and, you know, growing as growing in your voice and getting your confidence, when did you decide that you wanted to become a referee? I always have to show love to the original OG, Nick Shin. Um, mm -hmm. I saw Nick Shin doing it for years and years. He always said, yo, man, just do it, man. He's one of my good friends. So I went to Fallout Shelter and I was like, yo. I want to be the best ref ever. Santi asked me. He was just like, yo, why are you here for? I want to be the best referee ever. And ever since then, I just, like, I love this shit. Like, you have to understand, like, <laughs> how much I really love, like, you see ref match, the biggest smile on my face, I'm like, yeah, yeah, because Dave Chappelle said it the best. Sometimes you just part of, of someone else's dreams. And sometimes you see these young cats that's going there wrestling and they're like, yo, it could be their first match. It could be the first time that their mother saw them wrestle. It could be the first time where the girlfriend actually saw them like, dang, he's actually doing something with the money I gave him. You understand, though? It's just like, I love this shit, man. Like, I really love this shit. Like, this wouldn't be coming to do it. Like, it's the love 
for the game. Like me just being a podcaster, Jimmy, me just being around it, and I was just like, I don't like getting hit. I have a bum shoulder. This one right here, like it pops out. Don't be wrong. It got better. I've been stretching, meditating, taking my black seed oil, sea moss. I do what I have to do, but like it comes out a lot, very easy. So I was like, dang, I still want to be a part of it. What's the best way? Become a referee. You understand? Not only that, though, it's just like, yo, I help people with, with however I need to get, however. So this is why I became a referee because I can't be in the sport because of my injury, but I could still be in the game. Yeah, I definitely get that. It's so funny you mentioned that because one of my questions I was going to ask you if you ever considered, you know, being an in-ring performer. And yeah, you know, life happens and injuries and bodies have quirks to them and everything. But at least in repping, you can still be a part of the action without really being the person that has to do all of the heavy lifting and the fighting and stuff like that. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, when it comes to people's favorite matches, people more than likely always remember, you know, who was the referee at that time. Because um, I'll never forget, you know, the guy um, who was refing during Bianca and um, Mercedes slash Sasha Banks' match at WrestleMania. I'll never forget that for as long as I live. So I feel yeah. that even now in these days, you know, as referees are becoming more of their own personalities and people are paying more attention to them. Um, you get to see that and they, you know, identify with them a whole lot more, um, just like they do the wrestlers. So that's definitely valid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what would you say is the best lesson that you have learned, you know, from your referee training? Hmm. You are your best investment, no matter what. And you are the most important person. Mm -hmm. If you're off, everything else, uh, everything else around you don't work, no matter what. If what I mean by that is, if my head is not in the game, I'm not eating right, I'm not getting enough sleep, I'm not added to the map. I could be taken away because I'm not all the way in there. Even though I know how, even though I got better from it though, but I gotta put myself first to the position where like, hey, I got rough hog tomorrow. It's gonna be a hectic environment. Let me make sure I get my water. Let me sure I got my electrolytes. Let me sure I got a good meal. I got to invest into myself because I'm the biggest. Like, I'm number one. Like, in my world, only person that matters is me. Only person that matters is, 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 is me. Oh, my nigga Earl. Oh, see, see next week. Nigga Earl. <laughs> well, my nigga Dre. <laughs> 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 but it's just like, you are your number one investment. That's one. Two is, yo. It's never too late. No matter how old you are, or you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you put your mind to it. Number three is I learned that cardio and getting in shape matters. Because, boy, <laughs> boy, I I could tell you this, Stephanie Hardy. Be the referee. That shit ain't easy, dogs. That shit ain't mm -hmm. motherfucking easy. Jesus Christ, that shit ain't easy. Yes, it looks easy. But you have to be in top shape. You have to be in some kind of shape. You have to have your cardio up there. Because I gained like 40 pounds because of my job I have right now. Because you know how it is. When you work early hours, all you mm -hmm. want to do is just sleep and eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wake up and go to work. So you go to gain pounds. So I gained like 40 pounds. I was like, shit. I repped uh, Zilla versus a Jose. Zilla is Zilla, Zilla Fatu. First ever title right. match you ever won. Ever in his indies is his career first ever title. So I repped his title match. I was just like, Oh, I'm out of shape. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Let me go back to my routine. You feel me? Let me go back to taking my um my ginger tea. Let me stop eating certain kind of cheeses. Let me stop uh, let me actually work out. Let me actually do what I have to do. You feel me? Let me get back on my shit because my world that needs a ref, I gotta be in, in shape to make sure I keep up with these. Guys, because I don't know what venue I could walk into. There could be a time where there's there's no AC. <laughs> there's no AC. Or it might be in a venue where they, 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 like it's too cold. You feel me, though? At the same mm -hmm. exact time, I got to be able to, like, if my cardio is off, I can't hear what they're saying to me in the back. You feel me? And then mm -hmm. I can relate to that message. And we could be live, and me delaying those two minutes, me not saying two minutes, they, they go over four minutes, and then it, it cuts to the next match. You see how everything comes along if I don't do what I have to do 
as a referee, right. as a person outside of it. It's like mm-hmm. me, uh, wrestling for me is life. <laughs> Everything I do interconnects. If I don't get enough uh, um, sleep, I'm not able to do ref, ref a certain type of way. Let's say I have to go to training for something like that. I may forget because I'm tired. Everything is connected. This is why you matter. And anything like one thing I have to tell everyone is just like, you're the master of you. You matter. And if you, if up here ain't right, the Bible talks about that. You know what? It's not the, the, the head. If the head is gone, nothing else works. So, dang, that was a very long answer. I'm sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Because, I mean, that's a really good answer. No, it's really, that is really a good and a deep answer. And I appreciate that. Like, there's never too long of an answer here. So, I definitely get it. Like, you have to keep yourself, mm-hmm. you know, in tip-top shape for that. So, you can not only keep up with the athletes, but also just take care of yourself. Like, and that's just, you know, a good lesson to apply to anything in life. You just have to take care of yourself. Otherwise, you know, Every decision you make, you know, isn't necessarily the best if you don't take care of yourself. You're walking around, you're unhappy, you're just angry a lot of the time because you're just not doing what you need to do. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you have to care for yourself no matter what. So, I definitely mm-hmm. get it. So, mm-hmm. you have mentioned, you know, how you refed the match with Zilla Fatu, who actually just recently won another championship. So, congrats yeah. to him. Mm-hmm. But what has been your favorite match that you've refed so far? And do you have a dream match that you want to ref? Oh, 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 I got a couple. I got a couple okay. of matches that I ref. Come on, I was like, ooh. Mm. One of my favorite wrestlers to ref, Jay fucking Bougie, man. I love roughing his matches. Man is I get it. Well you have a Kevin Tree, I get I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. I got a couple. Um dang son. Jay Boozy versus Matt Awesome at We Are Wrestling. Boy, when I say they put on a clinic. The three of us all in sync. Like, oh man, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite matches. Big Tommy Yaya versus Bandit Keith from AEW. Dang, that was a good ass match. <laughs> that was David. That was a good ass match. I love it. I love it. PJ Savage versus Face and Anywhere Falls match. Man, what a fucking match. They fought outside. Like, they was in front of the door. The guy, the guy speared them outside. They was fighting in the streets. The guy got a blunt, smoked it, and put it on his head. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's intense. That sounds very intense. Um, what else match? I, 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 I got so much matches. Um, uh, Big Time Yaya versus um, Kuzo for the, um, the, um, the, the, um, for the Icon Championship. That was the match that Yaya finally got the championship at Battle Club. Like, like, oh my gosh. Um, I, I say match I saw. Uh, it's just it's just so much matches that I ref. It's just those are my the things that I can definitely cut to. Oh, um, driving to yourself versus prolific. <laughs> my team versus their team. That was the first year I ref, and I screwed them over. You was there. Yeah, you I was, was there. there. I saw that. You was there. <laughs> <laughs> you was there. It's just like those are that one of my crazy. favorite matches. Right, right. Those are my oh, Rayhan versus um Big Game Leroy. Are we are wrestling? Mm-hmm. I have a lot more, but it's one that came to my matches. But um, basically, next question asked is people I love to ref is obviously everyone from Drop Yourself, Zuka, Movie Mike, Big Time Yaya, um, uh, Savannah Evans, Rayhan, um. Um, um, Jay Bougie, uh, this 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 young cat at um LPW, that I can't think of his name, son. Oh my gosh, he's a great talent. I can't think of it right now. Matt Awesome, um, Nikolai White, uh, Encore Moore, Encore, sorry, Encore, um, Dream Match. I want to ref. Okay, okay, okay. I want to ref a couple of matches. I want to ref. A steel cage match. I want to ref a death match. For some reason, why I just want to get in the ring, these crazy motherfuckers, just feel the atmosphere. I want to, I like, like, I like, I want to be in this death match and say, I want to feel what you feel. 
because <laughs> I don't understand that. What's wrong with you? All right. I have a daughter. I, like, I want to go home that night. All right. But I want to see what they, they feel. I don't want to wrestle. Don't touch me. Don't put me into nothing. We fighting. But like, I want to do that. But if I two point, I can ref right now. The dream is Carmelo Hayes versus Ricochet. I want to do that. And on a championship level is I want to ref a Darby Allen match. That's one of my favorite wrestlers. And as far as an old school legend is I want to ref an AJ Styles match. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yep. Yeah, those are big dreams, but they can definitely come true. Like Carmelo Hayes versus Ricochet is a match that I'm still, well, a rematch that I'm still sort of manifesting myself because mm -hmm. that match was special to me because it happened on my birthday a few years ago. So oh, wow. The, yeah, so the idea that I got to see that, I did a full episode about that match too. Like, I'm obsessed with that match um, because <laughs> of that. And it was just like a present for me. So if they ever fight again, I would just lose it. And if I'm there, I, it would be great. But even if I'm not there, I would love it. Um, but yeah, those those are really, you know, really great, valid dreams to have. And um, you are definitely putting the work in so you can get up to those levels. So I am definitely here for all of that. Thank so, you. oh, absolutely. another place oh, yeah. that I want to ref at is women of wrestling. I don't know if they take men referees. They do. But I <laughs> definitely, women of wrestling, I'll be following what you and Kat be doing, though, son. Shout out to Kat. Um, I'll be following that. The gimmicks, they have real gimmicks. And there's not a typical you see on television. It's like, dang, so it shows that women have other jobs. My favorite one is that G.I. Joe dark skin lady. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> I was like, just smile. Like, oh man, like this is this like dang, makes like a pervert. I'm sorry. I like no. like I like black women. And certain yes. times I hate when like when I watch professional wrestling on television. They all got to get put in the same type of boxes. They all do the same exact thing. They all look like black people are not monolithic people. Even church mm -hmm. people are not monolithic. This is why I like women are wrestling because you show different kind of wrestling, different kind of um, different kind of gimmicks, different kind of styles. And I feel like it fits in its own universe. And I always ask myself, why don't come and just do work with them? Where like, like you say women over there have an evasion storyline, you could work and everyone eats like. To me, it makes no sense. That could be WD breeding ground or AW breeding ground. Hey, hey, let's put all the women over there and they get their own show. You put money behind it, everyone wins. That's crazy that you said that because me and my boyfriend, shout out to him, who's probably mm -hmm. watching right now, we've Happy had the same discussions. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. had the same discussions about WoW all the time because he always feels that when he watches NXT, he always says that he feels like NXT is basically wow featuring men because of how prevalent the women are on that show. And, and having and real storylines, have layers. Yeah. And it's just like, and in my mind, I'm just like, it would be so cool if they did, you know, cross over somehow or if in some weird sort of way, you know, they would get bought into or something like that. It would just be insane. But we've actually had that discussion before. And I'm glad that you actually watch wow. And they do have male referees. So if you ever want to like put in your stuff, you can, but we'll talk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm really, you know, excited that you've been actually getting into WOW and you, you know, and I appreciate that you see what me and Katrina do with the WOW show. Like, cause we love doing it. We love the ladies over there at WOW. They've shown us love. So it's been really, really great to watch their growth and their production value, you know, go up and up each season. It's been great. So if you became a part of it, that would be lit. <laughs> I mean, that would be good. It. I mean, like, even y'all were like, even what y'all do for it is just y'all bring awareness and attention, though. Like, y'all bring, like, a lot of awareness. Like, listen, I won't be surprised if, if like, y'all start working for them because honestly, though, son, is like, they need it. And no one's really covering it. Just like WNBA is, trust me on this way, it's like, right now, it's in a good spot, but it takes one body from the E. Somebody from AEW just to go over there, just to be that star athlete. It would have been Tessa, but Tessa always getting Tessa's way. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Charlotte goes over there. Imagine Becky go over there. Imagine Mercedes Monet goes over there. 
Imagine yeah. all these other people go. It just, it just takes one. It takes a. It, it takes like a. It takes one. Look at Kirk Angle. He went to TNA when no one else wanted to go there, and he set the way. And boom, you feel me? It took a Sami Zayn to come from the Indies. Say, I right, man, he's good. A Kevin Owens. It took AJ Styles. When AJ Styles come, you're like, dang, son. They know how to treat any like um 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 independent talent right on the main star. So. Honestly, I see Wild going to very long places because it's a good alternative and it's entertaining. And the matches, they're mm -hmm. good. They're, they're great. Good. They, oh my, oh my, Ooh, man! I can't watch what happened. Like my thing is, is why do we have pay per views or pre or pay per views or like why do they travel more to like like travel to like places that want it, like New York, Alabama, Chicago? Like, um, educate me. I don't know why. Tell me. Yeah, they've actually, you know, they've actually put it out there on social media to see, you know, what the answer would be. So it's not that they haven't considered it as far as I know. Um, I can't really speak to the ends, like to the deep, deep ends of it. But I do know it is something that they have, you know, put feelers out there for. Like, because, of course, they do their filming in California primarily, uh, which I get because the co-owner is Jeannie Buss, who is the mm. owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm. So, you know, I understand it being over there and them filming over there. But at the same time, you know, there is a desire for it, clearly, because, you know, their viewership is pretty high. At one point, at one point, their viewership was even rivaling Collision. Not to be messy, I promise. But at one point, their, their viewership was rivaling Collision. And it was just, and the fact that we were watching these numbers come in from WrestleNomics, it was really insane. You know, when I was showing Katrina all these numbers for them and we were just so happy for them that a, that an all woman show was getting viewership like that. So I can't really say why they haven't moved, but that's not to say that it's not something that they haven't considered. So, OK, OK, hey. yeah, yeah. OK, OK, yeah. So that's good. Like, I just think mm -hmm. that it should at least not go all the way to America. Hey, mm -hmm. just let me say what, what like WWE does. Hey, WWE went to Brooklyn. Can we get like not the Barclay Center? Get like a smaller venue, you right. understand? Get like the get like the Brooklyn Sky and where like, uh, you know, um, uh, Java Stand's gonna be at, or get like a college, a high school, something like that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, it, it's something they could do because I fucks with it. Like it's good and everything like that, and I want to see more girls from Indy Independence going there. And I hear no girls going over there. No, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm signed to Wow. Nobody. I'm look like I. I guess I look for no new talent. No, like it's actually a few women that I do know who it is. So I know that I know Tootie Lynn. Um okay. she's she's on there. Um and she's in a tag team. I know I'm not sure if you know the island girl Tracy Taylor. She just signed with them as well. So it's a couple of them that do, and then there are those who are still active in the indies who do work with them as well, too. Oh so, okay, 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 okay. yeah, it's 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 pretty legit like it's really legit i love wow a lot and it's going to continue to grow but you are definitely tapping on some great ideas <laughs> so i'm definitely gonna, like, <laughs> um share it and we'll just see what happens from there but of course you know you came here to talk about jobber slam for coming to the ring and i'm so excited because of course this is an event that you guys have been doing in conjunction with battle club pro for four years now and this is like the fourth one so oh. what can we expect you know from this one that we haven't seen in previous years because i was lucky to go to the second one and that was mm -hmm. amazing um mm -hmm. and i had such a good time but what can we expect from this one that we haven't seen in previous jobber slams a lot of home cooking. Mm -hmm. A lot of home cooking. A lot of talents where like talents were like we've been looking for a while though, and just give them a chance. Like, you know what? We gotta roll with this person. Let's roll with something different. You understand? A lot of first timers and coming ring and single match. We got Davy of Muscle Malcolm and stuff like that. First time people at Battle Club, AJ Francis, you know, um, um Kevin Knight and stuff like that, the um the King Bees. We got many different people, but this one's gonna be a lot of home cooking, and this one's gonna just—it's just gonna be more of the same. You've been to one, you know, each and each and every year gets better and better and better. Um, like, like, I'm excited. Like, I'm really, I'm excited. Like, I'm excited, Stephanie Hardy. I'm excited. Yes. Let's run out this card. Let's go.
Yes. So we're going to start with the women because that's the tradition here at HWP mm -hmm. Ladies First. So we have the NWA Women's Tag Team Championship match between the King Bees and Survival of the Thickest. So who do you have for this match? Um, and just tell me what the story is um, with these tag teams here. You're looking at four women that are going to hit each other. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna look cute, Barbie doll. They're gonna they they're not gonna look cute. They're gonna hit each other. It's gonna be an ugly match. They're gonna fight like if they don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? Like um Sammy Chaos, one of the closest friends of mine. I love her, man, to see her grow from day one until now. You know, um I have ref day King B's match over there at Ostay Wrestling and pff, day nice. So this match is all going to be very hard-hitting matches. If everybody who's a fan of wrestling, you're going to love this match. You're a fan of women wrestling, you'll love this match. You're a fan of just beautiful women, you'll love this match. Do you understand? You're a fan of white women, you'll love this match. You're a fan of black women, <laughs> you'll love this match. It's something for everybody in this match. And they know how to wrestle. We will not, we will not waste your time, money, and effort to put on anybody on this card that who's not going to put 110% into this match. So this match, you already know who I'm going to go for, man. Man, it's just like, I love you, Sammy, but Black Queens Forever, Snowbuddies Never. Black Queens <laughs> Forever, Snowbuddies Never. Gotta go with the, the, the King Bees. Come on, man. You ain't, Come on, Stephanie Hardy. Come on, man. You should know the answer to that. Look, I was just gonna let you say it, but just just every time I hear that, I just laugh so hard because it's just it's just the funniest thing. Um, it's so funny just the way that people, you know, just use that and just put that. So yes, the King Bees have definitely been on a run this year. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited that they're going to be on this card, you know, and facing off against survival of the thickest. So that's a really amazing match that I'm pretty sure you guys have to look mm -hmm. forward to with that and then of course we have the bcp icons championship um currently held by cosmic and she is defending that title against savannah evans who you who some of the viewers might know from tna so what's the story here with this one clean sweep it's time it's time for a new regime man Tyrone Yaya let's keep his title we guarantee that how that to get this title cosmic don't currently own it we just She's what's a champion like? What's a queen without her crown? She ain't it. We just gonna make it official. That's it. Savannah all the way. It's gonna be a great match. Once again, another student of the Fallout Shelter. Shout out to Joe Kim for providing such a great place to train wrestlers, to be on his card, to be champions on the show. So it's gonna be a great match all all the way through. It it won't be a cakewalk because Cosmo gets busy in the ring, but she never been in the ring with somebody named Savannah Evans. You know, understand somebody that could go toe to with any women's right now, currently. If you're a fan of Charlotte, if you're a fan of Jade, if you're a fan of women that who hits hard, this is a card for you. Another hard hitting match, Savannah Evans. So I definitely gotta go with Savannah Evans for this one, man. She she's not signed TNA for no reason. TNA 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 don't chat don't sign trash people. They sign people that who actually can make a difference in the ratings, in the ring, whatever. So I'm going with Savannah Evans. Yeah, Savannah is an absolute powerhouse. You know, mm -hmm. I was lucky. I was lucky to see her, you know, the last time I was in New York and just seeing how she operates in the ring is just incredible. And I just really want like the very best for her in all things. And Cosmic is very um, talented as well. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be an amazing match. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely looking forward to hear how that goes. Now, this one was really interesting for me. Now, mind you, I know it's not an all women match but the fact that a woman is in this fatal four-way match you know just really um grasp my attention you have um rob killjoy versus jay lyon versus jc storm versus trevor eon like why is there only one woman in this fatal four-way because she gets busy mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter what like 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 we're not gonna put a woman in the match who, who, who's not gonna hold her own She's right. she gonna hold on to this match. JC Storm, you know, a, a great friend of the show and stuff like that. Great friend of the family. Great, 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 great. Trevor, another person I say wrestling. I know him for a while though. From him just being a vampire and in in in, 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 um, in Independence, I asked him one day like, when does he sleep? He just he he, he just kind of ignored me. You understand? I I don't leave him around animals and stuff like that. I, I do feel bad for Jay Line because he's an animal and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He be trained, but. He been training in the Bronx Zoo, Jay Lyons, so he gets busy. All these people gets busy. If you see Rob Killjoy, another person who gets busy in the ring. Shout out to him for being AEW not too long ago. This is the match of the fan forward match where like 
this is a match that you cannot miss. This is not like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. From belt to belt, you can't miss. You have to be in your seat for this match. Every match. But this match especially because it's going to be hard hitting. They... They don't. They don't. They they don't give a fuck. It's it's gonna be that match. It's gonna be that match. And JC's still only woman. Think about it. When you see a white dude, and he only cool with black people, what does that say? Just like how the only woman in this match, she gonna hold her own. Yeah, that sounds really enthralling and really exciting. So that fatal four way match is, um. Probably, definitely, probably a lot to look forward to. So, mm -hmm. like Mr. Black said, do not go to the restroom on this match. Go and watch it and just be entertained and be enthralled. That's it. So, that's, so that's really all, I believe, for the women on the women's side of things. So, we're just going to move over to the men. We have the Battle Club Pro Tag Team Championship match between the Skoda Ricans. Please forgive me if I mispronounced that. Um, I'm so American. Skoda Ricans? I mean, Scott. I just did, I didn't know. Please forgive me um, cool. if I mispronounced it. Um, Federated, the Colossal Collective, and JTP South. Who do you yes. got, Mr. Black? Come on, you ain't no go for JPT South. But of I'm course. not gonna shit on other competitors. The Scott <laughs> Regans, the um, the Colossal Collective, the Federated. You know, shout out to my guy. Um, shout out, shout out to my guys over there. Don't shout out to my guy, Young Lion. Young Lion is a guy that's on train. He, he's making a debut at Java Slam. This man came in there, son. That's another reason why that I fell in love with wrestling. Another utterly reason to see guys like that who came in there struggling, trying to find who he is. And by the time he's in the ring, two different people. From day one I met him till now, Young Lion definitely is the type of person you got to look out for. This man gets busy in the ring. I don't bless people with nicknames unless I know that how to I understand the words, the power of my mouth and the words and the power of names you give people. Young Lion, because I saw the... The hunger, I saw the dedication, I saw, I saw the consistency, I saw the way that he picks it up. Hungry, starving, young lion. So to see him make a debut at Java Slam, he told me this. Yo, I'm gonna wrestle on this card one day. And he did it though, son. The um the um the um the Colossal Collective, him and his crew, Mike doing awesome things though. It's gonna be a tough match. Once again, all these people's on the card, they're gonna put up a fight. But for this, I'm going to JPT South because just like everyone else on this card who have been putting in the work since last Java Slam, Rayhan been putting that work in. Getting better spiritually, emotionally, physically. Putting in that work in. Yo, Movie Mike, my man's over here training with Dusty Rhodes. Legends over here to get better in the ring. For this moment, to able to call himself tag team champions. So I can't go get to my guys, but giving credit to the other people. Thank, thank you for coming. But you're not walking away with no championship. I love the Scott Ricans. I love those are my people. But thank you. Thank you for your services. But you're not walking home. You're not walking home with championships. Nope. Mm -mm. Yes, this is a JTP South stand account. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this it. is the JTP South stand account. So we're definitely rooting for them and everyone in this match. But of course, JTP South coming home with the win there. And we have a battle royal invitational. Um, of course, you see Faye Jackson, the fabulous Faye, in the middle of this picture, and you have a lot of people in this um invitational. Is this still the um Wait a minute. What was it? The gray sweatpants invitational, no, 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 or is no, this no, something no, no, completely no, 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 different? It's okay. pretty different. The winner is not okay. get to pick to be to get to pick any title uh, that they want. I know Santi Jorge, he having beef with my champion, big time Yaya. So mm -hmm. got my guys who can make sure that that doesn't happen though, son. But it's gonna be overall these these competitors, they ain't no slouch. Mm -hmm. I mean, they ain't no slouch. From Ahmad, from my nigga Stan, my nigga um. My nigga Encore, all these people in this ring get busy in the ring. So it's going to be a very entertaining match. Very entertaining. It's going to be it, it, everything that you want in the match. Everything you want. This is another match that you can't miss. There's another match that you better sit your ass down and go on intermission and use the bathroom. I feel bad for intermission because a lot of people go to the bathroom because Mr. Black, another step of approval that is a can't miss match. Okay, so is there anything specifically on the line in this match, or is it just? Oh, um, um when you win, you get a um a, a title shot, um, at okay. any title, yeah. Okay, okay, 
cool, 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 cool. That sounds very exciting. You got a lot mm-hmm. of talented people there. I see Stan, the man. I see mm-hmm. Duca. I mm-hmm. see Encore A-game. more. Just Faye, everybody, you mm-hmm. know. Zuka, so this A-game. Seems, yeah, so this seems like Only this thing. is going to be really cool. Yes. Brian, Brian Baum. That's another dude, too. That's one of my favorite people to watch. Another student of the Fallout. Another dude, uh, I was watching my Battle Club X2, another great competitor. So that's another one person you, you definitely gotta look out for, too. Absolutely. Now, this is a pretty, there's a lot of high profile matches on this card. I think that's the, I feel like that's one of the, this is probably one of the most stacked cards I've ever seen. And this match is definitely one of them. We have Yaya, who's a friend of the pod, who's been on the pod before. The BCP franchise champion going up against Kevin Knight, who is just a worldwide man. What's the story with this match? Um, basically, um, originally supposed to be Shelton Benjamin. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the dates right. Second person, it was Alex Kane. Unfortunately, that whatever. Sir said that's out of hands. We're definitely gonna recircle back though. Bumaye Nation versus Jobs itself. That's definitely gonna happen. But Kevin Knight, another dude, you know, seeing seeing him out say wrestling, that's another dude to watch out for. Also a hog, like you said, very well travel. Also T um um um, um, um TNA owns too. It's gonna be a great match. It's gonna be a great match. You know, you got someone like Yaya, he's been champion for so long. Yaya, somebody that had who worked his way to the top to become champion. You know, this is Mr. Mr. This is Mr. Job Slam himself, Yaya. So I remember the first time, first time Job Slam won, he fought O'Shea. Man, that was a hard hitting match. Everybody was like, everybody swear that he was not going to win. O'Shea is a big motherfucker. But you mm-hmm. messed with a gifted one, big time Yaya. So you think that he's going to lose that match? No, he wasn't. Every time, Yaya always put in that work. Look, like, check out his man's resume, Bandit Keith. What's up, Bruce? You already know, son. You're check out Brendan Bandit Keith. You don't understand Tech Man. You know, he gets busy. He be something before he could do it again. So all his matches, yeah, I've been trained for this moment. He getting faster, leaner, scarier, and sharper. You know, you only get you only get better with age, not worse. But he's big time yeah. Ha ha. So what do you expect? It's gonna be a great match. But I'm going with my guy Yaya. I'm guaranteed that we're going home with all the gold. Job to yourself. Guarantee it. Matter of fact, no. There's something that's predetermined, and that's something that's destiny. This is just destiny. No matter what timeline you're in, this is an event that has to happen. That's it. We're going home with all the gold. There's no guarantee it's meant to happen. This is a canon event. Us going home with all the gold, <laughs> no matter what the timeline is. Yeah, I feel you. I love that confidence. And Yaya is someone who is never short of any type of confidence at no. all. No. And I'm glad, you know, that he's sort of adapting more of his wrestling style to face someone like Kevin Knight because he's really fast. So I'm no, I know that match is going to be really good. And of course, mm-hmm. there's gold on the line. So it's going to be really cool. Mm-hmm. And now we have Steve Pena versus Charles Mason for the five points championship. Huh. What's the word on this one? The crazy motherfucking match. If you see Steve Penny matches, you see Charles Mason match, you know these these dudes don't care for your safety in the ring. They're gonna fuck you up. These two come together. This is a motherfucking match. This is the match that we're pushing the PG rating for this one. Really pushing this PG rating. This is the match that, this is the Fast and Furious type of match. You like this. As you see, like this, like, shh. You can't put your, like, like you got to put your phone down. Because the moment you put your phone up, you're going out, you miss missing something else. Oh, oh, this is, this match right here, son, guarantee you're going to look at, you're going to look at the competitors like this. The other way, it's like, mm, dang. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. This is the match right here. This man gonna give you the upgrades all night, like dang, son. Like dang, son. This is why I love motherfucking wrestling right here. This is the crazy motherfucking match. That's all I gotta say. Crazy motherfuckers. Crazy motherfuckers. Them two are this. Trust me, I took a chair shot to Child Missing in the face. That niggas don't care about nothing, B. Oh, nothing, P. 
Nothing, B. That man will have sex with your mother and look at you while he's doing it, too, B. And he will just run over the car and laugh. Crazy <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> wow. Well, I can't speak to Steve Pena. I have seen him in action. And he is really dastardly in the ring. He is very dastardly. So I do... Um, I can speak to that. I cannot speak to having seen Charles Mason, but I definitely believe you. Um, <laughs> I'm inclined to believe you. So, you know, this might be tough. This really might be tough. Um, yeah. I feel like with the way you just described it, there's really no predicting this one. Remember that chair shot I took? Yes. That's who gave me it, Charles Mason. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. And you see how hard that was? Yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that's going to be pretty intense. So we'll just yes. see what happens from there. Um, And, of course, we have this match. Um, well, before which... that, do you got the Muscle Malcolm versus um, Top Dollar? I do. I do. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Do, let's I make do, it sure. I do, I do. Let's just, let's, yeah. Yes. This is the match I call the, it's all for the YouTubers. It's for everybody that who unlimits you. Don't be wrong. Like, reason why I'm definitely looking forward for this match. To me, this is the match where I'm just going to enjoy for what it is, though, son. Because to me, shout out to AJ Francis, though, son. This is disrespecting Muscle Malcolm. Muscle Malcolm is going to win. Muscle Malcolm is going to come back. He just debuted in a tag team match. You know, losing effort, though. But you see that he's putting the work in for this match. And shout out mm -hmm. to him because, like, he represents my brother, me, everyone else that people always say that you're going to do one thing. You're going to be a wrestler or a YouTuber. And he defined the odds like, I'm going to do both. Yeah, I might like I like he might end up killing me his match though, but fuck it. To me, this is th this is a match that you can show your kids where like, yo, you can't just only stick to one. You could be multiple things. You feel me? So, so this match to me though, son, is like it means a lot more. It's because it just shows you that how that yo, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. This is what the business is about. Dreams coming true. So this to me, son. This is this is just in the match. I ain't gonna rate it. It's just a match for me. You're gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be a great match. Everybody come support. To me, this is a match. Just like for me personally, it's a match I just want to enjoy. And I, I, I like, I like, I ain't gonna rate it, man, because and like it means so much to me. Yeah, like when I first saw this match announced, I was just like, um, Malcolm, really? Um. <laughs> Not like a bad, really, but just like a, oh my God, he's really going to wrestle. Yep. And the fact that he was talking to smack to AJ Francis, because when I first met Malcolm, he's just, a, he's the sweetest. So the idea of him, you know, getting that book on him in a promo, on a video, mm -hmm. and then... And then AJ actually answered it and it winds up, you know, coalescing mm -hmm. into a match. It's just like so crazy. And these are two people who I've always enjoyed. I always have loved AJ Francis, you know, before he was hit with Hit Row and then afterward and everything. He was somebody I just actively supported because I just like, you, you know. You watched him in the NFL? Um, no, not in the NFL, oh, okay, but when oh, he was okay, wrestling the, in general. Yeah, when he was hosting the um Hidden Treasure show before he was on NXT with Hit Row. Um, oh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, when yeah. he was doing that, he looked like he was very joyful, and I just liked his spirit. So he just looked like he was really happy to be a part of things. And so seeing him make that transition into wrestling with Hit Row was really cool for me. And now watching him rise, you know, even in TNA after everything happened, it's still a beautiful thing. So Hell the yeah. idea that that so the idea that this is happening, you know, here and you have these two amazing people fighting each other. It's just like I know it's a special attraction match, but I am really interested in seeing it because both of these people are very charismatic. They, you know, carry, you know, their personalities, you know, with them whenever they bring it to their online persona. So I'm really excited for mm -hmm. this one. I've been really mm -hmm. excited about this match. Mm -hmm. So regardless to how it goes, I'm just happy for the both of them, honestly. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yes. I'm so happy for the both of them because they're just doing amazing mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, AJ Francis versus Muscle Man Malcolm. Oh my gosh, that's going to be great. <laughs> and so now we're going back to this one, which is a steel cage match between Darius Carter, who is just rising up the ranks more and more each year, and someone who I believe, you know, should be, you know, in a major promotion at some point. 100%. Versus, yes, versus Sir Wilkins. One third of Jabba Tears podcast and a wrestler in his own right. 
What's the story here? I hate this here? man, Darius Carter. This man been mm-hmm. out doing that family forever. Forever. Oh, Jesus. Back before Jarvis, uh, Jarvis thing was a thing, him and my brother had a little scuffle and like how that he made sure that my brother didn't wrestle that night. You know, shout out to Grim for stepping in. But no, you know, you know, he was attacking us. You know, you saw that match, that tag team match that he mm-hmm. had with Simon Miller. Somehow, somewhere, he ended up actually winning that match, attacking me after. This nigga has just been a door in our family forever. So this is mm-hmm. like this match is this is more than a match. We're still okay. Like not, it's not about it. It's about restoring honor to the family name. I hate this man. The way he looks. I hate the man. The way he looks. The way he wrestles, man. Everything about him. How he put his little boots. I hate how he has initial in the boots. I hate how he has like um he's so clean and well put together with his nice suit. I hate that about him. I hate how he looks. I hate everything about him, B. I hate his name, DC. I hate his initials. I hate this man. I hate this man. I don't like this man. You understand? So my brother gonna make sure he restore honor to the name for this match, man. It like this is this is another match where like you like you hate Stor Wilkins, you love him, man. Come and see him, man. You hate him, come and see him. You think he's gonna lose? Come see him lose his ass for him. You if, if you support him, come and support him, man, and buy a ticket. Cause this is because the whole card is must see TV. As you've seen, people out here watching Internet World, Internet, you see how this card is. You're like, ooh, I gotta come. So you probably think that, oh, oh Mr. Black, man, I can only come with me. Nah, man, bring the whole family. You think you bring Granny? You know how Granny be going crazy for his wrestling matches. You bring Granny, Papa, man, son. You understand? Great family atmosphere. From the age of zero to 99 to plus. It's going to be a great family atmosphere. <clears throat> None of that. If you title is like political talk, you title is going on in this world, man. Kobe, 824, come. Bring the family. Enjoy yourself, man. It's a nice timing, man. It's in Brooklyn. It's a safe part of Brooklyn. You're going to have a good time. You understand? So it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. You got tickets right now at paperbag.com. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Please go to Jobber Slam 4 in mm-hmm. Brooklyn, New York. Um, oh my gosh, like their events are always amazing. So shout out to the whole team for putting together this amazing card. I know it's going to be really, really great. I wish I could go, but Mm -hmm. I cannot. But either way, you know, I have to make it back to New York at some point. Like, I think about it a lot. I think about it a lot. So I'm going to make it back up there at some point. I miss you guys, too. too. You got to bring your boo. (laughs) I miss y'all, too. You got to bring your boyfriend, though. You got to bring your boyfriend. Oh, my gosh. Oh gosh, we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> okay. but, but actually, though, it was actually good to see you in Philly. It was very good to see you in Philly. Like, it was good to see you. It was good to see you in Philly. I forgot to you in Philly. Like, I have to say, like, wrestling's one of those things where I understand where, like, where like people in the industry, the music industry, be looking like, oh, I haven't seen this person in so long. When you see them, it's just like, how you doing? And you talking for hours. It's like a big family union where, like. Like, you saw us at Wally Mania, man. It was just like, mm-hmm. I have to say, we are laying out the foundation to how black media is in wrestling right now. Like, we don't know, all see it out together. Yes, some of us have arguments. Some of us don't do the best to each other, though. But overall, the bigger picture is we're here. Talk about wrestling. And yeah, we don't make get the credit due to mainstream media. You know, we know how that is. Kind of we look like, but overall, get the chance that we get be able to serve our community where that we need to serve our community, though. Know? And you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. You know, you can't go wrong with your podcast, Mama Dershey. You be so stern and innocent, like, dang, it's a good podcast. You want something a little bit rougher, like ours? You can't go wrong. Those wrestling girls, hey, man, I have no friends. You come to any event, you spend like $40 the most, maybe 50 you come out with mad friends. You feel me, though, son? So it's just like, mm-hmm. I, 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 I was going to give you your flowers and say thank you, Stephanie, for being you. Thank you, Stephanie, just being a pioneer in your field. Never be afraid, especially you doing Dolo. I'm proud of what you and Kat are doing. Also, just support. But just to do it your way because you're doing it because you don't know who's watching. And one thing I learned is this. If you get one viewer, matter of fact, you get two viewerships. That's usually you and someone else. And whoever, when that one person is watching, man, that means any, and um, that means a lot. And I had to realize that internet fucked up our, our way we look at numbers. Because if you have a hundred people watching our stuff on a daily basis, 
Or you, and some people can't even talk to uh, talk talk in front of hundred people. Imagine getting a hundred likes every single time, and then a hundred likes turn to a thousand people coming to visit you. A thousand turn to two thousand. But on the internet, oh, he only get two thousand likes. That ain't nothing. But you're looking like, dang, but but if two thousand people like your stuff, like your CD, you say you see for fifty dollars. That's like that's some good money right there. You feel me, no son? But yeah, on the internet, we don't see that as that. We say that oh, that's not enough. So. I'll give you your flowers to keep on going because, like, you, you, you like you see us, we support you. Or, you know, on TikTok, we always reposting your shit. Always. And you always liking your stuff. We support each other. Like, that's how that's how supposed to be. But, like, Kat, I mean, ooh, Stephanie, I'm proud of you. We we all love you here. Thank you for the opportunity for me to be on your show and everything like that. It was great, man. And, yo, there's more power to you and success, man, because we're rooting for you because I can only go far as much as you go far. As long as you keep doing what you have to do, son, you make my job a lot easier. As long as I keep doing what I have to do, I make your job a lot easier. Thank you so much for that. And just having you guys' support, you know, means the world to me, you know, like on yes. a very deep level. Because I just remember, like, you guys were the first Black wrestling podcast I ever saw. So, you know, it's amazing scrolling through Instagram, you know, just seeing you guys and now look at us and how we're just you know a family now and it's just such a beautiful thing and i just love having your support and just seeing you guys you know just flourish the way that you have it just inspires me to want to go further and work mm -hmm. harder and everything so i appreciate you and wilkins and janelle so very much and i know i i know we don't really see each other physically all the time but just in my heart of hearts you know, I wish that New York was closer <laughs> so we Fast. could because Fast. I because I love you guys so much. And but it's okay because the love is still there and I just appreciate it so so much. And I mean, you of know what course, happened when you... I try to come at you on the internet. We almost killed yes. them. <laughs> <laughs> we all came together like the Avengers. It was like Yeah. 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 And I appreciated <laughs> that so much. And if you ever, of course, if either one of y'all ever want to come back on the show, you are more than welcome to um, do it at any point. But of course, um, thank you for sharing oh, all of your love for wrestling and for talking about Jobber Slam on here. I really am excited for this card and I just can't wait to for everyone who's coming to the event to see it and, you know, just for where it's going to stand in independent wrestling in New York and just where it's just going to grow and how it's going to help other people grow in wrestling as well. So it's going to be really fantastic. So mm -hmm. thank you guys for doing what you do in wrestling and not just keeping it in the podcast. You guys go everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's just an amazing thing. So just tell everybody where they can find and follow you. And, you know, you've already talked about what's going on. Yeah. But, yeah, just <laughs> just tell everybody where they can find you and follow you and stuff. You can follow my personal page at underscore Mr. Black on Instagram and on TikTok and on on X. Yeah. Follow Jabba Tears on all social media. Like, subscribe to us on YouTube. And please, on September, I mean, August 24th, Kobe Day, door open at 5 p.m. at the Brooklyn Sky Dome. Java Tears, um, Java Tears podcast presents and the Battle Club Production Joint presents Coming to the Ring, Java Slam 4. So thank you. Thank you, Seth, for having me, man. And thank you for the audience for even listening. And thank you. Absolutely. And of course, you can follow me, your girl Stephanie Hardy, on Instagram and Twitter at Queen Steph Hardy. And follow the Hardy Wrestling Podcast on Instagram at Hardy Wrestling Podcast. And on Twitter at Hardy Wrestle Pod. You can listen to this episode um, on audio everywhere you get your podcast a little bit later on tonight. Um, and you can go back and watch the replay of this on the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube. Um, the channel now has 352 subscribers. So let's just get those numbers up. And just thank you so much for the love. So, of course, this is HWP with your girl Stephanie Hardy and Mr. Black. And until next time, bye, y'all. Bye. All right. Later, Stephanie. <laughs>